Okay, hi. Uh, I felt it was time to do a response to um, uh, Brett Helms' video. Uh, I've left it a couple of weeks so that he can, um, you know, everybody can see it and stuff. Uh, the video he did about the church, which was absolutely brilliant, uh, and probably the best hour I've spent, you know, watching something compared to uh, television and sort of things like that. So, um, without further ado, I'll run through what I have on the church and um, sort of talk about some of the gigs that I went to. I've kept the tickets and um, just uh, I also got a review to uh, to read out, a very short one, uh, which sort of sums up why the church, or one of the reasons why they were pro probably never very big in, in Britain, because it got absolutely slated uh, priest equals aura. Anyway, so we start with this album, which is the first album, um, CAC 130, the church with the, this uh, chopped angel uh, cover from the video. Now, I'm presuming that this is a UK one and that the uh, um, Australian one has a bus driver, the single, on the um, B side because it appears that um, when I looked here, I didn't even notice it says taken from the album, the church. So I I didn't know that really, but certainly Bus Driver would not be out of place on here because it's a great single. Maybe it didn't fit in or just didn't, you know, it, for one reason or another it's not on there. But anyway, that is, I don't know if it's my favourite church album exactly, but um, there doesn't really seem to be much of a dud track on there at all. Um, so I do really like this album. Uh, and... Moving on, I do have a copy of this on EMI Australia. So as far as I know, the Skins and Heart is exactly the same as the first album, but it must be minus one or two tracks, but it has this fighter pilot Korean War track on it, which is another great corking track. Uh, yeah, that's an EMI Australia label. Uh, so that was the... Uh, First album again, in a different format. The Blurred Crusade, which was, I'm just trying to think, that was in Brett's top three. I think it might have been, and certainly a beautiful cover. Uh, now, these ones I got, these albums, which I'm showing, before 1991, just from uh, second hand shops uh, around London, really. Probably even record and tape exchange in uh, Notting Hill. Over a few years, it took me time to get them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm here. I would say Field of Mars, almost with you. When you were mine, just for you. I mean, they're all, you know, they're all great songs you took. Yeah, well known, well loved. My copy does have a little bit of a mark up there, but I'm not really that bothered to be honest. So then, these ones I'm not as the next two albums I'm not as keen on in some ways. So we've got sounds here with, of course, um, um, Electric Lash, uh, It's No Reason, I Really Like Fly. Um, yeah, this is a pink one. I don't know, does this one come in different colours or is it Remote Luxury? I'm not quite sure. Uh, yeah, I'm just not quite so keen on these two. I don't know why. Whether they're obviously not as poppy, I suppose. Um, maybe it was just sort of a transitional sort of um, period for the church. Now the next one I'm going to show is, is chronological order. So, I mean, as in when they were recorded, not as in when this was released. So this is an EMI Australia um, double album. One standout track on here, it's sort of like a best of compilation, is Life Speeds Up, which is an epic song, which was apparently um, B-side to Almost With You, um, some great pictures here, as you can see, and it has funny little Steve Kilby uh, liner notes on it as well. Uh, my copy only has the one in a sleeve, I think this was probably, I think it was 
H and V or Virgin. I bought it on an on an import here, but the other one it, it's missing the uh, the uh, cardboard uh, picture with the lyrics on it, which I don't know at the time. If it would have gone back. Look at presumably Marty's old shoe here, beaten up suede boot. Yeah, presumably at the time I wouldn't have been able to have got any um, extra uh, get the inner one back or I just didn't bother at the time I was really just really wanted the music so that is that uh, and then we come on to the Arista BMG period so we've got Heyday uh, quite a collection of mullet, mullets and paisley shirts there but yeah I'm pretty keen on this album yeah I don't know that it's my total in my total top three or so um, you know it I presume most of you who are watching the video know it's the Paris label. So maybe that was an import, I think. Or, well, I bought it after it had come out. So, come to Starfish. This is my second copy of Starfish. The first one was from my mate, um, uh, and it had a really funny click. The first copy of it, it used to go Spa, Ah, Ah, Doom, Doom. Doom. And now I talk about it, I sort of miss it a bit in a way, but this is my second copy. I think I'm just bought it off eBay. So, um, yeah, maybe that would be in my top three. I think that would be in my top three, top three or five or so. I've got a 12 inch to Under the Milky Way here with Musk and Warm Spell as the uh, B sides. And then I come to a period where I actually went to see the church or got to hear about them and saw them live for the first time, which was, I do believe, 1990. Because in my book of tickets, I have there's this one here, which is in London Town and Country Club, April 1990. And here, uh, May 1990. So they're obviously trying to push... Um, uh, Gold Afternoon Fix at this time. In fact, I even remember going and there was a wall, wall space, wall display, which we, one of these gigs, which we pulled to shreds. We took whatever we could back on the train, taking the staples off it and whatever we could. <laughs> it's just quite funny sort of a story. Uh, so that brings me to Gold Afternoon Fix, which now, in retrospect, I'm not quite so sure I'm that keen on, but it has some great tracks on there. Um, Transient, I mean Grind, Grind is a great track, Metropolis, Pharaoh, great opening track for an album which the church always seem to, um, they just seem to crack that don't they, they seem to start albums off so well um, and they know how to finish them as well. Uh, so I was just noticing this morning there's Marty there and there's, uh, it must be Plug on the beach there. Can't see the other two here in these four pictures. Yeah, so there we go. Now the next album was Priest Equals Aura. I'm just not quite sure where the ticket to that would be. Maybe they didn't tour then. Maybe they didn't tour then. But for many years, I only had, and it's not here, I only had the CD, and then some years later I managed to acquire um, second hand again, pre-sequels or on vinyl, which I think is quite difficult to find, and I think Dome is not on here, whereas it's on the CD, and this is a great album, some great tracks on here, which I don't know, would this be as good a starting point as anywhere to go with the church? I think it probably would. Anyway, thinking about this, I cut out a review from um, Long Play here, which I think must have been MME or um, Melody Maker at the time by Tim Southall. Don't know what's happened to him now, but let me just hold up the cover and say what he says about it. He says, uh, Priest equals Aura is another church LP built on sturdy, not to mention studious, music foundations, but lacking a knockout punch. At 
times the church sound uncannily like U2, then James, then Lloyd Cole. Uh, of course, they've been going long enough to claim it is they who have been plagiarised, but if they have been ripped off and, and overtaken, then they only have themselves to blame uh, for failing to add any dynamics to their cool and careful style. The dis disillusionment uh, sounds like a shoddy pup pub rock tarted up for the royal variety performance and uh, that's a sort of a family show that we have in the in um, in the UK uh, for the Queen usually or somebody of the royal um, uh, disposal uh, yeah uh, performance singing brick in, uh, uh, Pink Floyd's another brick in the wall while chaos is an unbearable exercise in crashing art guitar wank all nine minutes of it. Throughout this marathon 14 track LP you're hoping that the church will rock out and scream something either unpleasant or essential. Anything in fact to save us from the sheer pedestrian nature of this record. The church alias simply don't have it in them. And he gave it a he gave it a two. That's all he gave it I'm afraid. So um, <clears throat> I guess that's one reason why why you know, fans in the UK, they're sort of, um, uh, never really came to uh, a, a huge audience, really. Um, so here we have uh, JD Doherty from Patti Smith's, um, um, well, getting the credit there, anyway, the, the drummer. Um, not sure if he was on the previous one. Certainly, if you watch Brett's video, he, you know, far more knowledgeable. About the church run I am. I just do the listening. So, and I have this on a t shirt. I used to have gold afternoon ticks on a t shirt in 1990, but no, no more. I was rather tired. So, I do have this one, which I got some years later. Uh, then, obviously, it would have been. Uh, oh, sorry, we have the single here as well to Metropolis there with Monday Morning on the B side. Next album was this one. Which you've got on CD, um, which is Sometime Anywhere, the double of it, yeah, with the, with the seven bonus tracks. So, yeah, I mean, this is I was quite disappointed with this when it came out in some ways, but there's a well, there's at least half a dozen on here that would not look out of place on any. You know, retrospective disc sort of discography box set or something. Yeah, I actually quite like this drought track, which is on the bonus disc. Uh, ah, something else. Sorry to be mixing my vinyl and CD, but we have an archives compilation here. A quick smoke at spots from uh, eighty six to nineteen ninety. So. Uh, on an import on a mushroom label so this must have been when they when well yeah the things that BMG uh, didn't want so this must have been uh, when was this released 1991 so that would have been well actually it was before sometime anywhere but anyway this is an album that I got on import uh, and then Remaining things that I have here, we've got uh, uh, my mind's gone blank. Magician amongst the spirits here on CD. Rips, yeah. Welcome, yeah. Come down, yeah. To name but three tracks. Uh, now that was 1996. So if I just show you the other tickets that I have from seeing the church, that was a later one. Uh, I'm not going to miss anything out here. This is just a book I have with all my concert tickets and cinema tickets and things in it. Not there, no. Uh, what I didn't say about those first gigs I went to was Concrete Blonde supported them on one of them, and then I sort of got into them as well. Another band, pretty unheard of in the UK. And uh, we've got. Um, 
Okay, well, let's just start at the front. The church keeps I have been to. Okay. Here's one at the Underworld. 2002. 12 pounds. <laughs> Here's some other church ones. There's a Marty Wilson Pipe one there. From 2000. Two Knights at the Borderline here from 1994. And two at the Garage in 2000. Oh, sorry, in 1998. Mm. Maybe I haven't got all the tickets here. But. Oh, sorry. Certainly the Borderline I went to in 1998 because I have this bootleg double CD of them. Uh, playing well, it was Stephen Marty, actually, that's all it was. Uh, there's a Cortez the Killer cover on there. Uh, yeah, Life's a Gas is another cover on here. Yeah, so we've got the Hotel Wound, uh, Reptile, 10,000 Miles, Monks of, Month of Sundays, uh, Under the Milky Way, My Little Problem, The Night is Very Soft. Into My Hands, Grind, Louisiana, Almost With You, Mistress, Buffalo, don't know that, Tristesse, Providence, Come Down, Shadow Cabinet, and Constant in Opal, which they opened with, I've gone backwards there. So, just a few more to show you. I have a hologram of Bar with the uh, bonus disc in there as well, which was. Um, 1998. I will show this. I have a box of birds, the covers, which I, I like that album. That's a good album. And the last album that I have, I haven't, can't believe I haven't bought any church albums since 2002, is After Everything Now This. Uh, and two more ones to show. And have a look. Because there was a mean fiddler one here in 2004, and then I think the last time I saw the church was 2007, and that was uh, here. Uh, Carling Academy, Islington. So I don't know if they've maybe not toured in the UK since then. Last two things to show I have a Hex album. Which is um, with the lady from Game Theory called Don Met Thayer, with Steve Kilby, who plays all other instruments. So that's the real sort of, very much the cover to sum up what it's like. And lastly, the first Jack Frost album, which was another great album when it came out, with Steve Kilby and Grant McClellan. Uh, yeah, that is a great album. So I think that's my pretty much my um, collection of church stuff. Um, hope you found that interesting. I'm sure other people will do a follow up uh, to Brett's video, but that was a great video, as I say, and it, you, it probably couldn't be bettered. So um, yeah, I think I'll just wrap up now and say thanks for watching, and I will do uh, another video soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.